What's going on, everybody? How's it going? Welcome into the Sacktown Sports Kings recap show. My name is Chris Watkins, joining you uh, from the home studio today. It's been, it feels like it's been a really long time uh, since we've, uh, or I guess for me at home, um, as the Sacramento Kings absolutely, absolutely blow out the Raptors by a score of 123 89. Uh, I believe that's their highest, large, uh, their largest margin of victory uh, for the season, which uh, had just happened the other day against Milwaukee. I think that was 37 points. Uh, I cannot do the math real quick in my head right now. So um, what is this? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do the math in my head. Uh, but I believe this is the largest margin of victory of the season so far. And even if it wasn't, this was definitely the biggest blowout uh, just in terms of feel. Like the Kings really dominated this one uh, from the first quarter on. I think Toronto got the lead at, I think it was 17 to 16 in the first quarter. Uh, Kings got it right back. Toronto never left by, led by more than one point. And uh, the Kings really coasted in this one. And it was great to see. I mean, it was too. Um, I, I really seriously can't think of the last time. Um, where the Kings, because even in that Milwaukee game at home, the Kings kept their starters in pretty much till halfway through the fourth quarter. Milwaukee actually was the first one to wave the white flag in that one. They put in Thanasis about six minute mark in the fourth quarter. The Kings were ready to play that one all the way out. We know that no lead is safe in this league, but specifically when it comes to this team, it just never feels like uh, things are solidified. And so tonight was the first night where you were really able to, to completely take your foot off the gas in the fourth quarter. You saw Colby Jones get minutes. You saw Jalen Slauson get minutes. You saw Kessler Edwards get a lot of really good minutes in that fourth quarter. And uh, that's that's exactly what the doctor ordered for a game like tonight, um, or I guess today, as it's only 6, 6.56 uh, here on, on the West Coast. And uh, it feels great. It feels great to get this out of the way early. Uh, you can go home. Hopefully, you know, there, there's not. Ho I'm actually hoping today is the first time and hopefully the last time I will say I'm actually hoping there's not a ton of viewers in here. I'm hoping that people uh, enjoy their their stress free night and don't have to worry about tuning into their Kings today. For everyone who is in here, of course, as always, thank you so much. Uh, you guys are incredible. I was actually thinking about all of you uh, earlier today, just about um, there's so many of you that I see here literally every single night and uh, just just the amount of content that you guys are looking for from from the King side of things uh, is crazy and, and definitely is somebody who loves sports and specifically loves uh, the Kings. I, I just uh, I, I just am, am kind of astounded by how many of you guys show up every single day here. Uh, or every single game here, I should say. Some of you every day on the uh, on the midday show, but some of you guys are are in here after every single game, and uh, just just the amount of Kings content that y'all can consume, um, it's just awesome. It's awesome because there's so many good content creators out here, um, from Deuce and Mo who are, are killing it on their end. You know, my guy Matt George absolutely killing it. Brendan and Frankie, you can check out them on the Return of the Roar podcast. That thing got relaunched. Um, and there's, there's honestly just too many, uh, other ones to mention. I know everyone always says that, but, uh, seriously, there's so much great content out there. And the fact that you guys, uh, just are, are so hungry for it all the time. Uh, it does not go unnoticed, man. We really do appreciate it and, uh, really appreciate it on a game like tonight because, you know, everybody can, can hop in here when the Kings lose by 30 and complain and you know, act like they've seen these guys every single night, and how they're never gonna watch again, and all this stuff. But um, in a weird way, a game like today, if you're showing up here looking for content uh, after the Kings just absolutely destroy uh, the Raptors with 15 games left to go in the season, and you're still uh, around your dinner time looking for Kings content, that's awesome, man. That's just awesome, and that's why this fan base uh, is truly amazing. And y'all, y'all actually like basketball, and it's it you know, follow this team. A lot of people, again, like will be casual viewers. They'll tune in for the ESPN games. They'll tune in for the playoff games or whatever. Uh, but just the, the fact that uh, it doesn't matter if it's the Raptors, it's a 30 point win, or uh, some of y'all have showed up after Charlotte losses. It, it really doesn't matter. Uh, y'all are just always here. So definitely appreciate that. Uh, and back to tonight's game. And as a matter of fact, let me start where, where this game ended while my thoughts are still kind of fresh on that fourth quarter. Um, I think they mentioned 
that Kessler Edwards is on a, a minutes streak right now of uh, most consecutive minutes without a turnover played. Uh, Kessler, I thought, gave really good minutes in that fourth quarter. We haven't, I was actually just talking, uh, funny enough, with, uh, I was talking j- uh, just the other day with Deuce uh, before the game about Kessler and just how weird it is that last year, you know, he was traded to this team, not a lot expected of him. Uh, and, you know, he ended up actually being a pretty big piece for them down the stretch. They, he was kind of the the Keon Ellis of last year in a little bit of a way. This defensive revelation that they found. Um, and, you know, by the end of the season, we were wondering, is Kessler Edwards going to get playoff minutes? And to go from that point last year to where we are this year where, I mean, let me, let me look it up here. It feels like Kessler Edwards, if I had to guess... He's played in less than 15 games, and that's just that's me giving a, a, a wide range. Like, I feel like, honestly, it's felt like under 10. Um, and Kessler has played, let me see here, Kessler Edwards has played in 42 games. Like, see, it, there's just no way that's right. It is right. It's what ga- basketball reference says today was his 40th game of the season. But uh, let me see here. He has played... So he's played 13 games this season over six minutes. I don't know what the threshold I want to put on is, but you know the bigger point is it just feels like Kessler Edwards has not been uh, nearly as big of a piece to this season as what he was last year. And, and frankly, I kind of thought he would just be a, a guy that Mike Brown would have leaned on a bit more earlier in the season when this team was looking for defense. But we haven't seen him much at all. He came in today. Uh, Kyle Draper was talking about on the broadcast how tough it is to, and it's a great point to to just kind of come off the bench randomly and never really know if it's going to be tonight or if it's not going to be for a week. And for Kessler to to come in uh, most nights, you know, he really doesn't have much impact. But tonight, you know, he he got a full quarter of of work and um, it it was it was good minutes. I mean, he hit a three. I think he might have hit two threes. Uh, had a nice finish in transition. Uh, you saw Jalen Slauson have a nasty little finish there at the end. Davion Mitchell got some really good uh, attacks at the rim at the end. And of course, you know, you could say it's garbage time and none of that stuff matters. But um, A, I would say that garbage time is how Keon Ellis first showed up on the map. If we remember all the way back to the Houston games, uh, the Houston blowouts earlier in the season, uh, those were the first time uh, times in which we got to see Keon get an extended look, and it ended up leading to Keon starting a couple of those games earlier in the season. Uh, but B, this is this is the developmental time. Like again, the 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 big shame of the Kings not having many blowouts uh, on, on the positive side, but honestly, just on both sides, just this season, the Kings really haven't had. Um, have really haven't had much garbage time in which they've been down by 20, forget being up by 20. Uh, this is the time in which you really can just throw guys out there shamelessly and say, hey, yeah, Colby Jones, Jalen Slauson, go make mistakes, please. Like this is your your time to actually get on an NBA floor, get those jitters of, you know, so what, if we have to put you in uh, unexpectedly in a real moment, it's not your first time out there. So go get all of those excitement, all those jitters out of the way right now. Um, and, and then we can start to really develop, okay, on the floor, in game action, even if again, even if it is in garbage time, just kind of getting the rhythm and the flow of what it feels like to enter a game, what it feels like to manage your stamina past the initial, uh, you know, the, uh, what what is it called? Adrenaline stage. Uh, all that stuff is, is really, really important. And the only way you're gonna learn it is is by going through it in real time and and that is one of the the other big benefits of blowouts and so uh just really awesome to see uh, a game in which the kings completely take care of business there was no question about it second half opens up the kings extend the lead even more than it already was um just that that's exactly how you do it and i even put out a number there at the end of the third quarter the kings had outscored the raptors just in the second and third quarter if you looked at the Kings in the second and third quarter, they scored 36 points in the second and 31 points in the third for a grand total of, why would I put myself on the spot like that? Uh, I said 36, so 67 points. Uh, and then the Raptors at the end of three had 65. So they had, they had outscored the Raptors in two quarters uh, for what the Raptors had scored in three. It was just pure domination. There, there was no looking back. 
and uh, it, it just it feels great. It just feels really good to have a coast to coast victory. Everybody had. Uh, and this is one of the great things about blowout wins as well as, as it's almost like we're talking about these like we, you know, never or like we're on a desert island and we never get water. Um, another great thing about blowouts is the fact that everyone gets a little touch of it. You know, everyone gets to, to have their little bit of moment. Uh, Keegan, I would say today is, is the one who I think I would have liked to see have the most moments. He ultimately didn't have a great game shooting the ball even still 0 of 5 from 3. He's been ice cold from the perimeter here uh, recently. I, I really hope he gets this out of the way before playoff time. I could live with it right now if it means, you know, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel 10 games from now. But it's starting to get concerning, not in terms of long, you know, long term. Keegan Murray isn't the shooter that we think he is, but just for this season, him going into this slump. Uh, let's see here. He's only had one game. Uh, two games here recently, I guess he was two of eight uh, in Memphis, but two of his last, uh, let's see here, two of his last nine games, he's had double digit threes made. That is not good. He is shooting 25% from three entering tonight. He shoots 0% from three tonight. Um, that's not great. That's, that's almost a 10 game sample size of Keegan shooting under 25% from three, especially with Kevin Herter out these days. That's not going to cut it. But I say all of that to say, even with Keegan being probably the one uh, that was most disappointing, he had a couple charges that he drew. I think he drew one charge today and was close to drawing a second. I also tweeted out this number. Keegan is 10th now in the NBA in charges drawn this year. He's fourth uh, in charges drawn since the All-Star break. That's, again, just more showing of Keegan's development and really, again, showing this game is a, a representative of Keegan Murray. I wouldn't say he's, this is a, an example of him sacrificing much, but um, it's more just symbolic of Keegan Murray's offense has definitely taken a step back this season. But what he's giving you on the defensive end is is almost neutralizing it completely, like in, in a good way. It's almost making all of the struggles offensively I wouldn't say worth it, but at least palatable because of what he's providing on the defensive end. HB was was just solid today. Three of five from three. He knocked down his open looks, had a couple drives. I think he got, yeah, he got to the line once. Uh, he finishes with 16 points. That's exactly what you want out of HB every single night. Um, Sabonis had a triple-double, just dominated his matchup. Didn't really need him to go crazy in the in the scoring department, but was just a monster on the boards. Really, with the exception of that one possession, if you remember, I was definitely either in the first or second quarter. It was while the game was still close. It might have been in the first quarter. There was three offensive rebounds in one possession. Uh, it was this weird lineup where I think it was Sabonis and four guards. I think it was Monk, Duarte, Mitchell, and Ellis, I want to say, were on the floor at the same time. And Toronto got four offensive, re three offensive rebounds in a row and scored on their fourth opportunity. Um, don't want to see that lineup. I know uh, this is, there's going to be a lot of experimenting going on with Kevin Herter out of the lineup, out of the rotation. Uh, but whatever that lineup was, it can go in the garbage because that that didn't work out well. Um, but besides that little moment in time, Sabonis dominated on the glass. He got six offensive rebounds, which is just insane. Uh, Keegan was plus 20, uh, plus 33. Domas was a plus 26, uh, which is just ridiculous. Keon did what he did. Uh, four steals tonight after having five blocks the other day. Um, I'm going to have to count the amount of stocks that this guy is just putting up steals and blocks. He had five total combined steals and blocks um, after having six combined their last game. Um, that's ridiculous. That that definitely is the the biggest two game span of any king this season, uh, and that's Keon doing exactly what he needs to do. Two of five from three, that's perfect. Two just hit two threes. I don't care if he finishes with six points, and those are his only two points or the two threes. That's really all Keon is going to be on the offensive end. Just hit him when you're open, and uh, you know keep the ball moving. And that's exactly what he did. Two assists, twenty five minutes. Uh, easy work for Keon. That's exactly uh, what you want to see from Keon pretty much every single night. Um, 
let's see here. Anyone else? Uh, De'Aaron Fox, incredibly efficient tonight. He's had a lot of inefficient nights here recently. Um, it was good to see him have it going and um, really just, you know, just coast. I mean, they had nobody who was going to uh, challenge him. I'm trying to think who even started for uh, – for Toronto today. I mean, they, there, there was no, who was going to be able to slow down De'Aaron. So everybody, I I've been talking about this stretch of games here where I'm calling it eating your vegetables, just kind of taking care of what, what you have to do in order to, to get to the real meat and potatoes of it. No pun intended. I swear there. Um, but you, you've got to, you've got to be Toronto. You tomorrow, you, I want to see the same exact thing against the wizards. You have to beat the wizards. Orlando, I would say you should win. We can talk about that later. Um, but you you have a gauntlet coming up here. You've got um, you know you've got a couple games against the Mavericks. You've got uh, that road trip in April where you go to Boston. You go to OKC. Uh, you have to play the Pelicans again. Uh, it, the Kings have a brutal second half or not second half rest of this schedule. Uh, you ha it's like these games you can't even really think about losing like these just have to be wins uh tonight and tomorrow so you know i guess mission one accomplished uh mission one is is definitely accomplished so yeah that's 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 pretty much all my thoughts on the players and their performances today uh if you have any questions or anything else you guys want to talk about please feel free put them in the chat i'm gonna look through you guys' comments now yeah, actually, I didn't mention Duarte. Decent stats from Duarte tonight. Um, yeah, and another triple-double from Domas. Duarte is somebody who, hey, man, I just want it on the record. Everyone who's been in here, I told you all, Duarte, I, I wasn't giving up on him. Uh, I, see, I see something in his style of play. And, you know, if all – the defense – so defensively, he was too handsy. He was being too aggressive. Offensively, it wasn't like he was – throwing the ball around and his shot IQ wasn't awesome, but I think it was mainly off of, I think he was mainly taking shots that he feels like he can make. So if his biggest problem was being too aggressive defensively and just not making his shots in which, you know, there is a track record of him being a shooter that you, you can kind of fall back on. I just kind of thought those things could easily be fixed. Shots go in and, uh, and you just kind of tell him, Hey, stop being so handsy and and we like the intensity we like where your mind is at but um just pull it back just a little bit and and you'll be able to play Duarte tonight five of six from the field got a couple offensive rebounds that he just kind of put back up uh fell on his lap and uh and hit some threes that's exactly what the kids need to do he finished 14 tonight um which is definitely one of his highest point totals of the year um but I I really like Duarte uh, just as as the idea of Chris Duarte, I should say. Of course, if he's not hitting shots, it does become a, a little bit tough to keep him on the floor just because he does get a little bit excited, excitable, I guess, when it comes to open looks. Um, and if he doesn't have it, sometimes you'd want him to just kind of move the ball around. But um, that's that's also what he's out there to do is just continue to shoot the ball. And, you know, ultimately, I think he's he's a guy who – provide size and shooting and this team could use both of those things uh, a lot of nights so um, I've got no problem with Duarte getting some minutes here especially with Keegan whoops I'm, I will fix that by the end of this season um, especially with Kevin Herter uh, presumably gonna miss a, a good chunk of time still no official update yet on Kevin Herter's injury and how much time he's, he's officially gonna miss but um, it you know it's safe to assume Herter's probably going to miss at least a month here, uh, probably more. And, uh, you know, that opens the door for Duarte. It also opens the door for Sasha Vizankov, who might return tomorrow. I would, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Sasha is going to play tomorrow. I just think with how it was reported, um, I, 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 knowing Sean Cunningham, I just don't think he would put, you know, he could return as soon as tomorrow without that being essentially what was told to him. And I, there's no reason to say as soon as tomorrow, you wouldn't put that level of expectation, just throw it out there without, you know, there being some reasonable 
conclusion to come to that he's going to play tomorrow. I, I just, I really think that that Sasha is going to be, be available tomorrow. So both of those guys, Duarte and Sasha definitely are, are probably the biggest um, beneficiaries. I will not say winners in this kind of situation, but beneficiaries of, of Kevin Herter uh, not, not being able to play. Yeah, absolutely. Shortcake and shortcake's definitely one of those people I was talking about at the top of the show who's in here every single day and we all definitely appreciate, but it was a boring game, but it was the best kind of boring game. Absolutely. I thought those Knicks and Grizzlies games were boring for completely different reasons, but um, this game definitely, uh, it, it was kind of weird to, to just, it's, it's just weird. Yeah. It's weird when your team is doing incredibly well it does get to a point where, oh, we're beating them so bad, it's kind of not fun anymore. <laughs> it's it's really interesting how it's not just basketball, but sports in general can be like that, um, where it's like, I mean, it's it's kind of like the the whole, you know, you're playing your sibling in, in a sports video game, and, you know, you're kind of messing around for two and a half, three quarters just to kind of, you know, keep them engaged, and then you just kind of turn the boosters on in the fourth quarter. Um, that wasn't even what the Kings did tonight. The Kings just were like, uh, I kind of feel like little brother in you today. And you're just, I'm going to beat the brakes off you and I'm going to throw lobs off the glass. And I kind of want you to go cry home to mom. I kind of, I kind of really hope that this game ends with you throwing your controller on the wall and crying to mom about how uh, I won't let you play or something. That's, that's the kind of attitude the Kings took today. And uh, I honestly, I, I need more of that. I need a lot more of that f from the Kings. Oh my gosh, Amid Rock. I'm so sorry I'm just seeing this now. We got to light the beam. You're right. Boom. How about that? How about that? The beam is lit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amid Rock. Appreciate that. I don't even know if you were just saying it, but uh, if you like, if it was just like, hey, how you doing? Like, good afternoon. Hey, hey, light the beam. I don't know if you were just using it as a pleasantry, but it did remind me to light the beam. So thank you, Amid Rock. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Bat. This is exactly like, I literally feel like me and my girlfriend spent all this time building this set. Uh, you know, we, we literally took a whole day building and buying all this stuff. And then the Kings had like the longest home trip, home stand of the season. And I didn't get to use it at all. So the Kings have 14 games left and I believe six of them are on the road. So we'll, we'll hopefully be able to, uh, to use this set a lot more. Uh, here. Thank you, Mid Rock. Appreciate the sweatshirt. Absolutely. WNBA. Don't, don't forget. Okay. Once the NBA season is over, WNBA starts right back up this summer. You'll get to see Caitlin Clark in the league now. Okay. Ex excited for that. She'll be joining the Indiana fever who uh, also have uh, uh, Aaliyah Boston, who is, uh, I think she was the number one pick last year, but she was the rookie of the year this year. Uh, is incredible. I will always, always stand for the W. Uh, it is a fantastic league, which uh, is, is honestly, it's full of talent. It's got just about every team has somebody that you could um, get behind and be like, this is, you know, this, this is our savior. So I um, would highly recommend people getting into the W and uh, hoping to do a couple, couple WNBA content related things this summer, hoping to work with uh, our good friends over at Bleacher Report on some WNBA stuff. And I thought I saw our good buddy, Sean. Yes, Sean. I don't know if you're still in here, but Sean, yes. Big WNBA head as well. Uh, Sean, actually, Sean, actually, you know, we talked about Sean the other day on, on the stream. Sean is doing legitimate WNBA work. I could talk W. I could wear all the sweatshirts I want. Sean is boots on the ground covering WNBA games. Definitely go check out Sean's work. Um, he's one of the few people I've actually seen uh, cover the W, like like um, you know uh, uh, you know writing and and not just you know li like I'm doing where I'm just really pubbing the league. Uh, Sean is is doing the actual hard work, and uh, it it definitely is appreciated. And definitely go check out all Sean's stuff over there. I'm just gonna continue to be his his hype man. <laughs> Yeah, do yeah. Duarte was definitely doing his thing or his thing for sure. Duarte, for sure, was uh, was killing it tonight. Yeah, exactly. Shortcake. We discovered Keon the Ellis Island because of those blowouts. 
um, early in the season. And uh, I was kind of disappointed that Colby didn't didn't have a great moment because we've been seeing Colby Jones's Stockton, uh, not highlights, but his Stockton stats here. Um, more so, I mean, the last time I feel like we really saw one of one of his big games was that game over at Golden One Center against Mexico City. But I, you know, I, I still think that there's going to be a moment where hopefully they can get a blowout tomorrow as well. But I, I think that Kings fans, I hear a lot of talk about Kings fans at, with with Jalen Slauson, um, which is fine. I got no issue with Slauson. Um, but I think Colby Jones is the one who I, I seriously think next season it would not surprise me if we exit training camp and Colby Jones is, you know, if, if whatever Malik Monk is the starter next season, I think Colby Jones definitely has a shot at being in the rotation next year. Absolutely. So I, I would hope that Colby Jones can get some minutes down the stretch here because I don't think he's going to get much playoff time, but I think it'd be really cool for him to kind of build some confidence in the NBA uh, before next season. But I, I definitely think Colby Jones is, is going to be a dude. Yeah, that's a great point of Mid Rock too, and this is the point of Stockton. Like those guys were ready to go because uh, even Kessler Edwards, Kessler Edwards just spent a, a little stint down in the G League as well. That's so true. Um, that's why those guys were flowing. Uh, you know, yeah, Slauson has had a couple moments here recently where I'm actually really glad that Slauson made the trip. Now that I'm thinking about it, Colby and uh, I guess it, yeah, it's Slauson didn't have to make the trip because Mason Jones didn't didn't make the trip. So it's actually interesting that Slauson was even with the team. Um, but yeah, you know, those guys had are, are in the thick of the season as well. And those guys are, are definitely ready to go. And you saw Slauson, that fool was ready to go. See, Jess, that's actually wild. I'm actually do want to get your guys' opinion on this. Just in general, do you feel, what's, what's like the perfect time for these recap shows? Because I do know... A couple other people do it. Obviously, do some mo, do their night chat, um, and I kind of want to, you know, peg my own lane here. I'm trying to. I think. I think this is a good time. I, this feels like the right time. Just immediately after the game, turn it on. Um, but I have been thinking about this a lot recently, especially with the playoffs coming up. What is what is kind of the best time for everybody? Obviously, I can't go on immediately after the game. I try and hop on ten minutes or so after, um, and then we usually end up going for about. 30, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so I, I, I do think that the time is, is going to stay here for a while, but uh, more so thinking about next year and maybe, like I said, maybe I can adjust it for the playoffs. But, um, you know, would doing these things 45 minutes, an hour after the games help? Because um, obviously I can't go after the games, listen to Mike Brown and the post-game press conferences. So I'm kind of missing a little bit of context, more so when I'm at the game. So... Um, if you guys feel like maybe later time is, is better, I'm definitely willing to listen, but, um, for the most part, for anybody tuning in and loves this time slot, I don't think this time slot is going away anytime soon, but definitely as we start to think about building this thing out and, and next year as well, I'm just curious what, what you guys think about the, the timing, when is best for most of you guys, um, post game. And also as well, check out off nights, which is, uh, uh, Alan Styles, co-host of Styles and Watkins, obviously, is doing uh, his own little YouTube's uh, YouTube live stream as well on off nights, um, where obviously on game on non game days. So his next one will be on Friday. He hosted one yesterday as well on non game days. Alan will be live on the YouTube on the Twitter as well. Uh, and he'll just be talking Kings. That's going to be, I think, more of an open forum, a little bit more conversational. Um, so definitely on on the off game, off nights, non game days, uh, definitely check out uh, Alan's off nights over there, and uh, and have a good time over with that guy. Yes, I did get the Domas plushie. I got the Domas and the Fox plushie. Um, I just feel like, uh, yeah, I just I just thought they were adorable. And, uh, I honestly, in my head, I was like, you know, if they would have like, a like if right now there was a Chris Weber and Mike Bibby plushie that was floating around, I would probably want it. I would be like, oh, that's a really cool vintage piece of like, what a timestamp of King's history. So I'm hoping in like 15, 20 years, I'm, I'm holding on to these things too. And, 
at least it you know i'm just hoping that maybe it'll it'll have some sentimental vintage value at some point those maverick games are going to be huge i'm honestly so scared for them i feel like we can't even truly on honestly the reality of the situation is we can't talk about where the kings are going to finish in the western conference sorry i had to stop there i can hear i left nbc on my television and if the program not available screen is just blasting in my living room right now uh, but yeah those we can't talk about what seating the kings are going to be until after those Mavs games, because those games are going to be so big. They're going to be so big. If the Kings are tied, we'll just say the Kings are tied with Dallas. That gives two games of separation with like 10 games to go, maybe even like eight games to go with pretty much no time to, to separate them. So right now, I mean, it's, it's huge that the Kings continue to win games. Let me see if the standings have been updated here on ESPN. Uh, the Kings sit a full – no, they sit a half game in front of Dallas right now. They have uh, one less loss than Dallas. They, both teams have 40 wins. Um, those games are going to be massive. Like, they are honestly going to determine who is going to be in the play-in and who's not. So, I, I'm nervous, but those are absolute game changers, 100%. Uh, those games pretty much make or break the Kings seeding. Uh, splitting it probably isn't in the Kings' favor – Looking at Dallas' schedule, they have a ton of cupcakes. Kings have, uh, as I've listed, just some really tough opponents, a lot tougher than Dallas. So uh, the Kings would do, be doing themselves really well if they win both of those games. Splitting it, pretty much much to do about nothing. You lose both, and you lose hope, pretty much, is, is how that goes. Malik's dunk. Malik's dunk. What was Malik's dunk? What? Oh, yes. Oh, the response. Absolutely. To, uh, oh, I can't remember what his name is. I think, uh, I think his name was, his last name was Gay. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, had a dunk. He only had three points. So it was his only points of the game. It was this really nice stick back. Uh, you know, just a put back dunk that he just hammered right back in. Toronto got kind of hyped for like 30 seconds. Nah, it wasn't even 30. It was like five seconds. Malik just dribbles the ball hard, pounding it down, uh, drives the lane. And I think NBC literally cut from Raptors bench reaction to Malik just ascending down the middle and he threw it down. He's been on one recently. It's crazy that we're at game 70, pretty much. What yeah, I think we're at we're at game 68, and Malik still got legs like that. That's crazy. Started off the season with a crazy dunk and and just is is only getting well, he's not only getting better, but uh he's he's keeping at that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sasha might might play this week. I'm telling you, he's gonna play tomorrow. Well, he'll he'll be available tomorrow. I shouldn't say he's gonna play tomorrow. It'll be interesting to see how much is Sasha needs to like fully, you know, get back into conditioning shape or get it back into basketball shape, I should say. Um, or has he been already working on getting into shape and he's pretty much ready to go? It'll be interesting because he really doesn't get many minutes anyway. So um, it'll be hard to distinguish: is he on a time, is he on a minutes restriction, or is he just not getting a ton of minutes? Yeah, that's interesting for sure. For sure, June. Like, that's that's a great point. Right. Uh, that's something that, frankly, if we want to take it back to the playoffs last year, that's exactly what got Keegan going. He sucked for three games. Two games in two and a half quarters. And then third quarter just got hot. Got hot in a blowout. And... He continued it on for the rest of the series. So you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It actually would have been really interesting to, to see Keegan just, just force feed him. Like almost use that fourth quarter like the Kings are a bad team and and they're the ones getting blown out. And just play Keegan Murray summer league ball, honestly, for a quarter. And just just get him just force feed him and get him out of the slump. That's really interesting for sure. Um 
you know, there's there's argument that you force feed him and he just continues to miss and maybe it does more damage. But um, and also, yeah, I mean, you you kind of replied to yourself there. It's good that he'll be fresh for tomorrow. You got a game tomorrow. You'll have another opportunity tomorrow. You just hope that at some point it, it starts to click and you have another opportunity uh, in less than 24 hours. So that that's about as good as it gets if you're not going to do it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Slauson, he's a really good athlete. He is definitely a really good athlete. I've kind of, I've been trying to figure out like what his NBA comp is. Like what, what, if he were to pan out in the NBA, what would it look like? And, you know, I think at draft time, people were saying like Draymond Green and that's just Draymond's one of the best defenders of this generation. He's not going to be Draymond Green. I've said like uh, the, the name that I've kind of settled on is James Johnson and that I think is like his his high end, which take that however you want. I think that he will either at best be James Johnson, which again, you just kind of take that how you will, or he's going to be a lesser James Johnson, which I, I don't really know what exactly that is in, in today's NBA. So He's definitely intriguing. He's definitely toolsy. He's definitely skilled in some areas, but um, he also just kind of is a, in a weird way, it doesn't really exist anymore because of positionless basketball, but he is still kind of a tweener where he's got a lot of like power forward traits, but he is kind of in the body of a small four. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's he, He's just, again, he just doesn't really have a perfect position. I would think that, He's a modern day four, but I also don't think he shoots well enough either. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't really know where that where that what that does for us. Like I don't think he can be Jalen Johnson, who is another guy who's, you know, he's a little bit more springy than than Slauson is. Um, he's probably as bad or good of a shooter, however you want to frame that, um, in like similar physical builds. But James Johnson, I just think the 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 ridiculous difference in athleticism for him uh, is kind of what sets him apart there. <laughs> I saw this earlier at Rock. Yeah, there's Hello Kitty Night, March 31st against the Utah Jazz. I saw we were there when uh, I think Kings Warriors was Hello Kitty Night earlier this year. It was pretty lit, can't lie. Didn't know Hello Kitty is, is playing for multiple teams like that. Kind of wild, bit bit of bandwagon energy there from 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 our friend Kitty, Miss Kitty. But um, that's cool, you know. We'll 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 take on. She can be our our celebrity. It'll be interesting how Slamson and Kitty get along, you know. That'll be interesting. That'll be that'll definitely be something to monitor. I'll have my people look into uh, how well Slamson does with other cats. I know sometimes it can be tough to introduce cats, so. That'll definitely be something I'm monitoring that night. Da, 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 da. Let's see here. The offense looked awesome tonight. Wow, Curtis with the thank you. Information, information. Thank you. 12 threes tonight. 12 threes tonight for the Kings and a victory. Let me look up how many games have the Kings. Let's. I'm going to take a guess right now. The Kings, 12 threes. A, is that the fewest that they've won a game with? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say that's the fewest amount of made threes that they've had in a win. I'm also going to say they've probably sh made 12 threes or less. I'll say under 15 times this season. Let's see. Let's, let's go to the results. Uh, and the results are in. We are going to game logs. We are going to three-pointers made. And so far this season, the Kings have finished with 12 threes or under 24 times, uh, tw 11 threes or under 18 times. So I was a bit off there when I said 15 or under. And they have won a couple times. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 10 times this is their 11th time winning with 12 threes but nonetheless 
uh, still impressive. It was, was not as rare as what I thought, but at the same time, uh, is definitely one of their lower point totals. Uh, the fewest threes they've hit all season is six for those keeping track at home against the Houston Rockets. Not earlier this season, the more recent matchup. And the fewest threes that the Kings have in a win is nine against the Denver Nuggets uh, in the middle of February. So um, not many wins with 12 or fewer threes, but um, still, still got the win today. Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. Mid rock. This is this is great, great insight here. Chris. Immediately after the game is the best time to capture the emotion. Do some mo do run late, uh, and emotions have cooled. Definitely, I understand that for sure. That was kind of what I was hoping for, and also honestly, personally, it's a lot easier for me to just kind of. I try and not have these things sound like thought dumps. I don't like to have it feel like I'm talking at you guys. I'm trying to just kind of uh, tell you guys what I saw. Um, and, you know, obviously it, there is going to be a, a bit of a thought dump, but that's that's kind of why I like to do it immediately after is it just kind of feels a little bit more natural. It feels like everybody, not just me, but you guys also probably remember more immediately after. And uh, I feel like it just leads to better emotion for sure. That, that's definitely the way of putting it. Um, oh, don't worry. Mega Death Knight, appreciate you, man. Thank you for forever hopping in. Appreciate all y'all. Y'all are still on the bottom floor. That's the thing. You guys are getting in at the basement level of this thing. When in three years, this thing is is the biggest thing in, forget King's post-game sphere. This is going to be the biggest show in the NBA. Just wait. Just wait, okay? Uh, and you guys are just on the bottom floor. So don't miss it. Don't worry about not being here every night. The fact that you guys are here at all is, uh, is awesome. Ooh, great question. I don't think anyone has asked me this question or has asked been asked this question so great job street coyote what do you predict the the season record will be for the kings this year um i mean it's tough to say 50 uh which was the goal last year that's that's a little bit tougher to to just go out there and say um what are they at now i think they just picked up their 40th win they just picked up their 40th win of the season uh, and there's weather again. We are at game 70, 68. Uh, so we are da, 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 14 games left in the season. I'll say the Kings go. I think they'll win either 47 or match their 48 of last year, um, which would not be great because I guess that's, going 500 or just above 500 the rest of the rest of this way which i don't know how we'll feel at the end of that but I, that feels the easiest to say i mean it's just the the king's remaining schedule is brutal i mean if i were to base it off of how they've played here recently opponent non-dependent like if i if every opponent was a stock average team i would feel like the kings would win 10 to 12 games but the fact that they are playing competition that is above average orlando magic two games against the mavericks a clipper game a knicks game a celtics game a thunder game a pelicans game a suns game nine of their 14 remaining games i didn't even throw the sixers in there who could be sneaky uh i didn't throw utah in there who still is competing for the 11th seed I definitely didn't throw the Blazers in there either. Didn't throw the Brooklyn Nets in there. So nine of their 14 opponents, I would say, are fairly quality. I would say, you know, you got to win five of them. Uh, and, yeah, that puts, you, that puts you somewhere around, you know, uh, yeah, around nine nine wins, maybe seven to nine. Around seven to nine wins is, is where I would – would put that. Um, so I think it's going to be tough. And again, if they were just playing, if they had a schedule like Dallas, like, hold on, uh, let me read you from that same perspective of just telling you who are the good opponents left here on the Dallas side. They've got two games against the Kings. I wouldn't say the Rockets. They have two games against the Warriors. They have a game against the Heat. They have a game against the Thunder. So that's six, and I'm kind of stretching. 
If you want to include Houston, they have two games against Houston. There's there's eight for you. But that's a lot lesser than the Kings. They have a lot of two game series. They have two games against the Jazz, two games against the Kings, two games against the Warriors, two games against the Rockets. I don't know who the hell scheduled the the Mavericks the Mavericks uh schedule, but I mean, you pretty much gave them like a mini play, mini playoff series leading into the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, it just feels like Dallas has an easier time. So I'm, I'm getting nervous about about those two Dallas games for that reason. And also just the fact that, um, you know, it just feels like they're they're probably they're probably going to take that spot. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes, I am. Yes, yes, yes. I will be on playback tomorrow. I don't know if the higher ups here want me talking about it, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. Uh, I will be joining uh, the Kings Top Shot community tomorrow uh, during the game. So you can check that out uh, during the game. I'll be on playback on the playback app for the Top Shot Kingdom community. And uh, we'll be watching that game. I don't know exactly how it works. I don't know if I'll be able to like pause the game and break it down. I'm hoping to do a little bit of that, but honestly, uh, even if it is just like a watch party where we're essentially just the game is on and we're talking, uh, should be a good time. Really excited to just talk casual and uh, definitely hope as many of you guys possible can can hop in there. I really don't know the specifics of how all that is done. I don't know if you need to create an account, um, but if you have any questions, I would just hop on over to the, the Top Shot Kingdom Twitter page and, and I'm sure uh, you can figure piece to, piece everything together from there. Let's see here. Man Cave Tour. Maybe one day. Maybe, maybe if the if the Kings get another blowout. Uh, a, this is not a Man Cave. This is... You'll find out what it is if the Kings get another blowout. It, I'm honestly curious to see what you guys... Where you guys think I am right now. Um, not quite a Man Cave. But you guys can definitely... Um, you guys definitely can get a, can get a tour sometime. Oh, yeah. Get me on TV post game. Yeah, for sure. Coming coming for you, Deuce and Mo. I could never take Morgan's job. I could take Deuce's job, though, for sure. <laughs> I'm just messing around. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, no. Yes, Jess. Thank you for, for being rational. I feel like everybody is just like, it's either got to be one extreme or the other. It's either he's a bum, he's not NBA quality, or, dude, why aren't we playing Jalen Slauson? If Jalen Slauson were on the team right now, he would have such a huge impact. This is this is the right take. I don't think Slauson's quite NBA ready right now, but the progress in which he has had, the progression of his his development right now is definitely on the right track. He's exactly where you would want him to be at this point in his career. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see. We'll have to see how it develops. Yeah, HB and Duarte hitting threes lately. It's good to see, especially with Keegan not hitting them. It's, it's gonna, somebody's going to have to do it. Somebody's going to have to do it. Uh, da, 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 Raptors truly lived up to their record. <laughs> yeah, we've been there though. We've been there. That, that I had that thought in my head today of just like, man, y'all remember? I don't know how many of you guys have been watching the Kings for the past 10, 15 years, but you know, I remember being on the other side of this often where it's like, you know, you're, you're excited almost for, oh, can we hurry up and get blown out so that Travis Outlaw can check out and, you know, I can see more, I don't know, Tyler Honeycutt. I, I don't know. That was just a random, random throwaway name. But, you know, can can we see Ray McCallum more, please? You know, oh, finally, we're down 30. So Jimmer can come in. We can finally see what we got in Jimmer. Like Thomas, you know, Thomas Robinson actually started. So, yeah, I remember, I remember being on the Raptor side of things and I do not miss it at all. But at the same time, it was cool and a little bit of PTSD to go back to the fourth quarter being a completely developmental quarter 
where it's like that's I used to get most excited for the fourth quarter to watch everybody else. I would be like, cool, again, like I want to see what Quincy AC. Oh, cool, Scaldabissier time. Honestly, that was really the one. I was like, I can't wait for us to get down 30 so they can take out Willie and we can just see Scal or Harry Giles. And and I don't have to worry about him coming out because we're just going to lose. So uh, it, it's it's a really weird state to be in where the Raptors are. And it was real quiet in that arena. There is no life in that building. This has been a bad, bad season for them. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think to go look at the beam during the daylight. I'll have to do that tomorrow. The game's even a half hour earlier, so I'll... I'll uh, I'll try and, and and look at the beam before I hop on the stream tomorrow. So, yeah, I, I didn't even see. Did anybody see what it looked like? I mean, I know we've had in general some daytime some daytime beams, but um, I'm curious. I, I've completely – well, since they beefed it up too. They've beefed it up since last year. So I'm just curious what, uh, what that beam's looking like these days during the daytime. Like how <laughs> – I can't use the word I want to use, but how, how thick is it? You know, how thick is that thing during the day? Sorry, I'm messing around with some things. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if anybody if anybody saw the beam during the day, I'd love to know. 50 wins, really? Wow. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. I've got no, I've never had any problem giving love to everybody, man. It's always crazy to me. Um, I understand a little bit why people would be territorial or like afraid of, of giving people pub, like, you know, th to an extent, you know, there is, um, you know, Sacramento is not LA. There is a, a much smaller pool that we're all I don't want to say fighting for, but I mean, yeah, there's a, a smaller amount of Kings fans than Laker fans out there. So I understand why some people might be a little afraid to go tell people, oh yeah, there's actually a lot of great places to look. You don't have to just look here. Um, I think that we can all eat. I've always thought we can all eat, uh, especially with how things are archived t these days. Like you don't even have to watch. I would, I, I, if you watch me live, this is clearly a much better experience. We get to interact like this. Um, have fun, you get the energy, but, um, yeah, definitely, you know, you can, you can watch this archive, you can watch this in two hours and, uh, you know, we we can, we can all, uh, enjoy everything, man. There's, there's so much good stuff out there and it doesn't have to be one or the other. That's the thing too. It doesn't have to be, Hey, I love, uh, King's post game recap. So screw Screw Deuce and Mo. Like, I'll never know. Like, if you don't like them, that's that's fine. You don't have to like their content. You don't have to like my content. But it does not have to be an, an absolute thing where, oh, I'm team Sacktown Sports Kings recap and screw everybody else. It's like, it just doesn't have to be that cut and dry. It's just not that serious. Plus, like, you know, if you just think that you do good work, or you think you do better work than everybody else, like, you know, I, I really could care less, you know. I'm, I'm just doing what I enjoy to do. I, I like to talk basketball, and, you know, if you want to listen to me, great. If you don't, kick rocks. You're not going to learn as much as everybody else. I've completely lost where I was in the comments. Uh, I'm trying to find it. Here we are. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, I still haven't figured out what the range, what the what's the beam range these days. Can you see it out in Folsom? Can you see it in Elk Grove? I live like in central ish Sacramento and I can see it perfectly. I like it's 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 perfect from where I'm at. Obviously you can see it downtown. I would imagine you should be able to see it from Natomas pretty easy. Folsom feels like a stretch. Elk Grove. I feel like you should be able to see it from much of Elk Grove. Elk, I don't know, actually. Elk Grove's pretty deep. Like, if we're talking Delta Shores, for sure. If we're talking, like, Elk Grove, like, near... 
you know, like floor in high school or consume this Oaks or something like that. That's kind of deep. You know, I grew up around the Sheldon Pleasant Grove area. That's pretty deep. I feel like you can see, I haven't, I haven't actually been out to my parents' place uh, on game day to see if the beam's out there. So I'm actually curious, what is the beam range these days? What, how, how far, you don't have to obviously don't, don't dox yourself. Don't put yourself out there, but uh, you know, if you feel like you live a pretty good distance from the beam and you can still see it, please, please let me know. Oh, can anyone see the beam? I hear it's not lit. Hold on, Jess. I'm going to go check it out. Hold on. I'll be back in a second. I'm, I'm going to run out. Oh, it's not lit. It's not lit at all. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I might have just told on myself in terms of location, but no, the beam is definitely not lit. <laughs> it is not lit at all. So good, good insight here from Jess. It's not lit. So, uh, yeah, don't know what that's about. Maybe they're not lighting it during the daytime because it's just a waste of money and a waste of energy. So it's still a little bit like, I mean, it's, it's not completely pitch black outside. So maybe they're, they're just kind of waiting for nighttime to officially hit, but yeah, good, good investigative journalism there by, by Jess. Uh, the beam is definitely not lit right now. <laughs> so don't know what that means. Bad vibe. Bad vibe. Yeah, what is going on? Think about the think about the children. This is the thing. Come on. Think about the kids. 27 minute double double triple double. He got the triple double in 20. He did. He only played 28 minutes today. Damn. Damn, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> no, I have, it's not that crazy. I'm not in the bathroom. I'm not in the bathroom. That would be wild, though. I guess if you were really trying to lock in acoustics, I'm not saying I would advise it, but, I mean, you would technically have a built-in chair just throwing that out there you could like easily pad up the bed you're giving me some ideas here shortcake you're giving me some ideas okay i'm not gonna do it but it's not the worst idea you would definitely have to pad the room up or else it'd be really echoey but not a bad idea um I believe the Twitter on, I believe, let me, uh, I, I, let me get their official ad here. Uh, and while I'm plugging other people, I guess I should plug myself. Dave told me that I need to plug the radio show more on this. So I will, um, <laughs> listen to styles and Watkins every day, Monday through Friday from 10 AM to 2 PM. That is again, styles and Watkins every day from 10 AM to 2 PM. Uh, right here on Sacktown Sports 1140 YouTube. Also, of course, on your regular radio airwaves uh, on AM 1140. Uh, the Twitter that uh, that you can get all that information for tomorrow's live stream during the game is at Top Shot Kingdom. At Top Shot Kingdom. Uh, and you can find all the information for my live stream tomorrow. That's going to be a really good time. Uh, funny enough, they just followed me on threads. So... Definitely excited for that, and uh, yeah, hope hope y'all can uh, can join me on that tomorrow. The mirror gives, yeah, that's that's a good point. It is, I mean, it's less of a nook and more of a corner, to be honest. Yeah, I definitely think Herder's out till next season. I, I just I think I've never dislocated my shoulder, but thinking just thinking about the natural progress of it, like. He's going to be in an arm sling for, I mean, I can't imagine if you dislocate your shoulder, you're not going to be in a sling for less than three weeks, probably a month. Um, and that already kind of puts us at the end of the season. And then we're talking out of the sling, actual recovery time. That's probably going to be another two weeks of just, Hey, your, your arm is, you know, it's, it's 
back. But then we're talking about basketball conditioning, and I talked about this today on the radio show. The thing that I'm honestly most concerned about for Kevin Herter isn't the physical side of this. It's the mental. It's the it's the fact that he got hurt on a really normal routine play where somebody just kind of slapped his wrist down, and then uh, he dislocated his shoulder just off that. Like he was just trying to get a layup, and somebody swiped down, and that play happens all the time in basketball. And I think it's going to be the mental hurdle of of Kevin figuring out, hey, it's not going to happen every single time you drive. And like that sounds simple, but we know how much psychology can can just ruin somebody. Um, not psychology, someone's psyche, not psychology, psyche can can really ruin somebody, especially in sports. Like once that's in your head, it's not just as simple as telling yourself, don't be crazy. You have to just do it and do it and do it and do it until it becomes second nature again. And there's no talent. That's everybody's on their own timeline on that one. So I just have a hard time seeing Kevin Herter getting over the physical aspect of it, but mainly the mental uh, to come back in time. Yes, absolutely, Curtis. 40 wins before 30 losses. Always a beautiful thing. 100%. Um, not thick at all. <laughs> it's like, it's not. It's the opposite. It is... Uh, it's thinums. We we could all eat as is a sacramental thing, in my opinion. You'd be surprised, man. You would be surprised. Not that you would just be surprised at the amount of people who don't feel this way. I would think that um, you know, yeah, it is really weird, actually, because I I would say that a logical person would say, you know. Yeah, like, it's not like there is, um, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess I, as I'm thinking about it, I do see both sides of it, but I, I've just, I think it just ends up being a personality trait, pr frankly. And, uh, yeah, some people just, I don't know, man, <laughs> I, I don't, I can't speak for them. I can't speak for them is all I'll say. Um, is it really Jess? Cool. The beam is finally lit. Okay. It is finally lit. Can't see it from Elk Grove. Natomas confirmed. Off in Arden. The faint but noticeable. Some parts of Elk Grove. You can see it from Consumnes River when it's dark. That's great. That's great. That's great. I work in Natomas, so we kind of... It's on now. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe we clued somebody in. Um, da, 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 da. wow. So you have to tune in street street coyote says been listening to Kings games for years. Had to listen to games on AM radio 1140 with the G man before. Oh, so you have league pass now. Gotcha. Yeah, that's crazy. Someone was trying to tell. I think somebody tweeted it out yesterday that league pass is actually bad for the NBA. That's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. They were saying it more in terms of like, it's bad because now, essentially when games are on ESPN, it doesn't matter as much. It's almost oversaturation, which I completely disagree with. <laughs> this commercial, they honestly have not, I know they run it at least once a game, but they do not run it enough. It is so funny. Also, I don't know if I've said this publicly, but... I have a wide tin, like a tin foil conspiracy theory that that commercial is secretly trying to tell us that they're changing their, their uniform colors at some point here soon. That is absolutely 0% sourced at all. But it's just cause like just, if you listen to that commercial, there is like two or three different references to getting purple out, uh, I think literally the last sentence in the commercial is a whole lot less purple, a whole lot more swag, which has a weird implication as well. Like, I don't know. Just watch that commercial with that in mind next time and tell me if I'm crazy. Let me know if I'm crazy. Yeah, Jess, I definitely think you, you, you kind of put somebody on blast here. I kind of think you might've, 
you might have done something because it was off. It was literally off. And then I went outside, came back and you're saying it's on. So I kind of think you might've gotten somebody fired. I'm just kidding. That was really weird. Yeah. I wonder, I do wonder if maybe it has something to do with it not being dark enough. Never seen it in Citrus Heights. Interesting. Okay. Never. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty deep. That's for, like just in terms of distance from. Well, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I'm just trying to, th I'm, again, just trying to think what the distance is. Like you probably can't see it from Davis. I would imagine like past the causeway. I would think, I mean, it's all open land. I don't know. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. No shot. Camino, Camino, no shot at seeing it. I don't know if you're is somebody in here named Camino or are you saying El Camino, like the El Camino, no shot. Yeah, that's that's really interesting too. Yeah, it kind of sucks. We out here who don't live locally miss all this stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, there's nothing the Kings can do about that, obviously. But oh, never seen it here in Rhode Island, all the way out in Rhode Island. Yeah, there's no shot. <laughs> there's no there. There's nothing Vivek could do to to make you see it out there. First off, appreciate you tuning in uh, from from Rhode Island. It's eleven o'clock over there, um, but. Uh, that's crazy. That's wild. Uh, but yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, how, how, how did you become a Kings fan in Rhode Island? That's, that's, I mean, I assume that you didn't become, you didn't live in Rhode Island and become a Kings fan. I'm assuming you were Kings fans first and then moved out to Rhode Island. But, um, yeah, you definitely got to come out here and see it because I don't know if you lived in SAC previously and, and are just now moving, uh, or are now just, I don't know if you've lived in SAC before and are now just in Rhode Island or not, but A, I mean, if you haven't seen Golden One Center, got to come out and see Golden One Center just in terms of how much, oh, Malik Monk supporter. Interesting. Okay. Well then, yeah, you got to come out here. So you, you didn't get to experience Arco Arena or anything like that. Um, that's probably for the best, but also, yeah, I mean, you, you got to come see the beam because Malik, nobody loves the beam more than Malik Monk. So if you are really a Malik Monk supporter, um, we'll have to get you out here. We'll, we'll have to get you out here. I, I, I love my life. What a great name. Uh, so yeah, we definitely, definitely got to get you out there, but I've definitely thought that they should on like on, um, wow. Interesting. Interesting story there. Uh, I definitely have thought that they should, whether it be the Kings or like some local news station or something, when the beam is lit, have a, have a 24 hour live stream. Or whatever. However long the beam. Just have a, a beam stream. <laughs> Guys. What are we doing? What are we doing? Okay. An hour and ten, seven minutes in. And we struck gold. The beam stream. So simple. Set up a camera. Go live when the beam's lit. And it'll just play some lo-fi music. And that thing's. That sucker's getting like 20k views a night. And just, just like somewhere in the closing credits, just, just say like, I don't know, um, give me some fancy title, artistic direction or something, uh, by Chris Watkins. That's all I'm asking. So a beam stream. So I'm glad we got to the bottom of that. Um, I still have not done three stars of the night, which I should probably, uh, I should probably get going here because I've been on here for too long. And the whole point of enjoying an early game was that I would be able to enjoy a longer. And at this point, I really haven't done that for myself. So <laughs> let's go on to uh, three, uh, three, uh, what is it? Three stars of the night. Thank you. I know everyone's loving the beam stream. Let's, let's get it. Let's thank you. Yeah. Everyone's going to listen to it. Um, let, let's get on to our three stars of the night. Uh, first star is, it is kind of tough on a night where, you know, everybody kind of is is spreading the wealth. Uh, one, two, six guys finish in double figures. Um, Kessel Ryder was finished with nine, so just outside that. Davion Mitchell had eight. Keon Ellis had six. So you just had scoring all across the board. Um, if I had to pick one person, see, now I almost have to do process of elimination. 
I'll go with I'll go one star Sabonis for the triple double in 28 minutes. Um, his impact wasn't super felt on the on the offensive end. Uh, I mentioned his his offensive rebounding was incredible, but just in general, the best thing about Sabonis tonight was his rebounding. Uh, only had one turnover as well. Only had two fouls. Got to the line a couple times. Uh, just a solid night, a workhorse night. He got the double double. That streak now goes to 51 games. He's closing in on Kevin Love for 53 uh, as the record since the uh, shot clock merger. And since tonight has been a rambling, random, uh, just tangent kind of night, I would like to point out, as I, as anyone can do, look up um, consecutive double-double record. Just Google consecutive double-double record um, into, actually, hold on, let me, let me, that didn't get, ah, yes, it does, it still will, um, yes, double-double record, uh, consecutive double-double record into Google, and the first thing it'll show is, uh, actually, look at this, the first thing that it shows is a wonderful Sacktown Sports, uh, article written by our very own Frankie Cardicelli that says, Sabonis has 51 consecutive. The second is a Wikipedia page that says what a double-double is, and it will tell you that according to Elias Sports Bureau, Wilt Chamberlain holds the record for double-doubles consecutive. Uh, and would anybody like to take a guess on how many consecutive double-doubles is the actual record? Because it is not Kevin Love's 53. It is, in fact, Wilt Chamberlain's record of 227 consecutive double doubles in a row so let's just you know we don't really need to keep that in mind because wilt uh is just broken but the fact that everybody is essentially accepting that we're just gonna fight for second and we're gonna have to just draw a line here of a post wilt nba it's kind of crazy so Sabonis, 51. That's awesome. On his way to 53. I think he's going to break it. He's got some easy center matchups here coming up. I think he can get the record against Philadelphia, who's not going to have Joel Embiid. So it seems like he's going to get the modern day record. But um, for, for all of those of you who are staying in this chat for uh, an hour and 12 minutes, you will know the reality of the situation that Actually, Mr. Wilt Chamberlain had 227 in a row. So um, there's that. Uh, two stars. Our two star player of the night. I'm going to go Malik Monk. Uh, another really good scoring game from Malik. He had the big dunk. He missed a lot of threes today. That was really the only bad part about his game. He was one of seven from three. Those were his only misses of the game. He was 5 of 5 inside the perimeter. Um, he got to line a couple times, knocked them all down, got a couple of assists. Um, was was a pretty normal night, honestly, from Malik. But uh, just to have that that big dunk, uh, it, I don't really think that it, it set the momentum in the Kings' direction. But it was definitely uh, – it was a huge play. It was a really big play just to respond – uh, immediately and kill any possible momentum that the Raptors had. Malik uh, Malik was excellent, and uh, he, he definitely is getting my two stars for tonight. Three stars of the night. Um, honestly, I did think about giving it to Harrison Barnes for 16 points in 19 minutes uh, and knocking down his threes, but I, I feel like I've given De'Aaron Fox a hard time here. I think I've actually excluded him from a lot of these three stars here recently just because he's been a bit inefficient and – he fairly or unfairly gets held to just a different standard. He's supposed to be the best player on this team more nights than not. And uh, here recently, it, it's kind of felt like he's taken a back seat to Sabonis and, and kind of let some other guards uh, have some big nights here uh, without him really having monster, monster performances. Tonight just does what a star is supposed to do. Take care of business, was incredibly efficient. Didn't take bad shots, just just dominated his matchup. He had 20 points, plus 22, had five assists, which he has been doing so much better at moving the ball around here recently. Uh, I think he had back-to-back -back games of nine-plus assists. Um, has just been really good at distributing. He talked about the other day, my guy Alan Styles asked him after the game, 
Um, what what's going on with that? Essentially, why do you feel like people are guarding you different? And De'Aaron essentially said, "Yeah, people are sending a lot more help at me, and it's it's on his teammates really to get open off of those looks, and and that's part of uh, what makes." having De'Aaron on your team so important is the amount of attention and, and gravity that he has and how he's op- able to create open looks for others. So um, definitely want to want to big up De'Aaron Fox, who has just been great uh, and also had two steals tonight. Of course, have to give an honorable mention to Keon Ellis, who did get the start tonight, uh, got four steals, and I believe Keon Ellis continues to be undefeated on the season in games in which he starts. Let me double check that here and make sure that that is still the case. But I believe Keon Ellis is now 8-0 on the year when um, when he starts. Let me, let me make sure here. Uh, these are lineup combinations. Um, starting lineups. There we go. Why can I? Okay. Um, here we go. Keon Ellis is uh, da, 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 1-0, 2-0, 6-0, and he moves to 7-0, 7-0 uh, in the starting lineup. So shout out Keon Ellis, uh, who just continues to, to be the story here at the end of the season, um, be, being a huge impact player. Again, we like to look at Keon's plus minus. He was a plus 22 today in the box score. Uh, let me look at the last time Keon Ellis was negative in the box score. It was Houston on the ninth. Uh, he was a minus four against the Knicks the other day. Um, a couple, a couple more, more minuses than I would have thought. But when he's a plus, he is a big plus. Um, seeing a plus seventeen against the Lakers, a plus fifteen against San Antonio, plus twenty seven against Milwaukee, a plus six against the Lakers again, plus thirteen against Memphis. And then tonight, a plus 22. So just a plus minus king uh, and continues. This is now his one, two, three, four, fifth straight game with a steal. And one, two, three, uh, ninth game. Wow, he has nine of his last ten games. He has at least one steal. That is incredible stuff from Keon Ellis. That is going straight on to my ex once I am done uh, with this live stream, which is going to be right now. Y'all have a fantastic night. Uh, like I said, you can, uh, check me out tomorrow as well. Uh, during the game on, on the playback app, again, check out top shot kingdom for more information there. You can check me out after the game. I'm probably only going to do three quarters on that live stream because I'm going to have to set up for this, make sure I get all my notes and all that, uh, situated before I hop on here can also check me out here you go dave i don't know if you're still listening or not you can check me out every day monday through friday from 10 a.m to 2 p.m on styles and watkins uh, you can check that out on terrestrial radio am 1140 right here on or right here on the uh, sacktown sports youtube channel or our x account i appreciate you all so much for tuning in every single game or if this is your first game back uh good to have you We will talk tomorrow when the Sacramento Kings are hopefully taking down the Washington Wizards. And yeah, next time we're going to see immediately if there's a beam after that game. Y'all have a fantastic night and uh, have a good one. Peace.